What I want to do in this video is show you the Diels Alder reaction for the reaction that you would be carrying out in lab if we were able to do lab, that being the reaction between n phenylmalayamide as the dienophile. cyclohexadiene as the diamond. This reaction is the classic 4 plus 2 cycloaddition, where we're going to be forming a bond between carbon 1 and one end of the n phenylmalayamid double bond, and between carbon-4 and the other end, the mechanism looks like this. This pair of electrons comes in to form a new sigma bond from here to here. This pair of electrons goes in to form a new sigma bond. And this pair of electrons forms the pi bond between carbon-2 and carbon-3. The product will be a bicyclic compound, since we're working with a cyclic diene. And it will be a bicyclo 2, 2, 2 system, where there's a two carbon bridge between the bridge head here, carbons 2 and 3, a two carbon bridge between the bridge head carbons here, that would be carbons 5 and 6, and a two carbon bridge here coming from the dienophile. Because the endo rule is in place, the n phenylmalayamid will end up down on the same side as the carbon cover double bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3, and the hydrogens will be pushed up. That is the endo product. The exo product would have the n phenylmalayamid up here where these two hydrogens are in the exo position. And that's because of the secondary orbital overlap. I want to show you in this particular system. So this is the product that you would be isolating. And you'll notice it's quite symmetrical. There's a plane of symmetry right down the center, so carbons 1 and 4 are the same, carbons 2 and 3 are the same, carbons 5 and 6 are the same, and then carbonyls are the same as well. Another way that that molecule can be drawn, which is probably the way you'll see it drawn on SciFinder if you look it up, is to show the bridge like this. Often they'll show the bridge like that, kind of in the up position. And then since this carbon-carbon double bond bridge is on the same side as the infenomalayamid species, the endo product would look like that. That's a slightly uh, easier to look at system because it's uh, more planar in its representation. So that's the reaction. And now what we want to do is investigate the way the orbitals are interacting. To form that new six-membered ring product of the four plus two cycloaddition reaction. So I'm going to draw the cyclohexadiene in the same way that I was drawing it in the notes, where I'm looking at the diene kind of from the end. And then I've got this species here. So I have the CH2CH2 bridge in the in position, which is going to end up cis in the product. And I have the two hydrogens here in the out positions, and those will also end up cis in the product. And if I number those consistently, carbons 1, 2, 3, and 4 look like that. The orbital we're interested in here is the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, because these carbon, in the carbon bridge, the CH2CH2 bridge, are stabilizing the pi system and raising the energy of the HOMO. These are electron donating groups. So this is a normal diels alder reaction where we have electron donating groups raising the HOMO energy of the diene, and we have electron withdrawing groups, the carbonyl groups of the amides, 
lowering the energy of the LUMO in the diana plasma. So I will have a single node down the middle. And I will have a change in sign of the wave function, which I'm showing with the yellow shading. And then if I show pink shading, right, so if you consider that maybe yellow is plus and pink is minus, you'll see that there's a change in sign of the wave function as you go across between carbon 2 and carbon 3. And so this has C2 symmetry. If I were rotated around this axis, this pink lobe would become this pink lobe, this yellow lobe would become that yellow lobe, and the orbital would become itself. So that's a picture of the dyne. And now if I put the dyne file in the same orientation, or in the same uh, plane, but coming from below, right, underneath the molecule, the dyne file will want to be the endo position like this, and then in the middle I have my N-phenyl group. The N-phenyl group is not participating in the reaction, it's just there. This is actually a 6 pi electron system. It's a lot like hexadiene, which would look like that, in that it now has 6 pi orbitals. The energy diagram would have pi 1 through pi 6. The original p orbital energy level would be there between pi 3 and pi 4. These three orbitals would be anti-bonding. There are six electrons in the pi system filling the bonding orbitals. So the orbital we're interested in is actually pi 4. That's the LUMO of the dienophile in this case with the extended pi system. Pi 4 has three nodes because the number of nodes is always one less than the number of the orbital. Pi 1 has zero nodes, pi 2 has one node, pi 3 has two nodes, pi 4 has three nodes, pi 5 four nodes, and pi 6 has five nodes, n minus 1 for pi n. So what that LUMO looks like in the Cyclo hexatriene, or sorry, the 135 hexatriene species with three nodes. There's a node here, there's a node there, there's a node there, and if we use our shading, we have a change in sign of the wave function there, and a change in sign of the wave function there. And you'll also notice that that is also a C2 symmetric orbital. If I were to rotate it around the bond axis pointing directly through the molecule, pink lobe becomes bottom pink lobe, top pink lobe, bottom pink lobe, bottom yellow lobe, top yellow lobe. So it has the same symmetry properties as the highest occupied molecular orbital on the dye, which is just a 4 pi electron system, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, and pi 4, with top two orbitals being anti-bonding orbitals and pi 2, the HOMO, being the reactive orbital. So this is a normal interaction between the HOMO and the diene and the LUMO on the dienophile. So now I'm going to draw these orbitals, but I'm going to draw them on this system here. And if I shade them, in order for a new bond to form here between carbon 3 of the dienophile and carbon 4 of the diene, that has to be pink. And that has to be yellow. And now if I shade it consistently with the way I shaded the other one, there's going to be a node between oxygen 1 and carbon 2. <coughs> there's going to be a node between carbon 3 and carbon 4. And then there's going to be an additional node between carbon 5 and oxygen 6. The oxygens are not part of this reaction. They're just hanging out, enjoying the ride. What is part of this reaction is a new bond 
a new bond is going to be formed between carbon three here and this. So there's a new bond, shown in green. A new bond is going to be formed between carbon four here of the dienophile and carbon one of the diene. So there's a new bond here. So I'll kind of bend it around a little, also shown in green. And those are the two new carbon-carbon bonds that are going to be in the six-membered ring. And then the secondary orbital overlap that we worry about, which causes this transition state to be stable is the interaction between the carbonyl carbon and the back end, carbon three. This little orbital overlapping is that orbital. There's your secondary orbital overlap, stabilizing the transition state. And here it is also between the carbonyl carbon, carbon five here, and the back end, carbon two of the naive. There's the secondary orbital overlap. So, Secondary orbital overlap shown in blue. The new sigma bonds that are forming are shown in green. And hopefully that's a little bit easier to see with the color coding than the black and white version that I posted up uh, with the rest of the notes. So when you unfold that, the carbonyls and the nitrogens are in the endo position pointing towards the molecule. That means when this thing rotates, they're going to end up pointing down. When you do a disrotatory motion here to bring these two lobes closer to the nanophile so they can form the sigma bond, the two hydrogens are going to go down and the bridge is going to go up as these lobes rotate in, these lobes rotate out. So we have a counterclockwise motion on this side and a clockwise motion on that side. That's the disrotatory motion. And then we have this one kind of folding out. Obviously, this is locked into position, so you can't rotate around this carbon-carbon double bond no matter what. But as you know, there is a partial pi bond in the transition state. So now let's try to draw the transition state for this. As we draw the transition state, we're not going to try to also ignore the orbitals. That would be asking way too much. So we're going to be partially breaking this pi bond. We're going to be partially breaking this pi bond. And we're going to be forming the pi bond there. We're going to be forming a new bond here. And a new bond there to these two carbons in the magnophile. And we have a partial pi bond there. So you'll notice if you count the six-membered ring that's going to be present in the product, we have dashed lines all the way from carbon 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, and 6 back to 1. That's the aromatic transition state. Causing the whole thing to be stabilized. And then we know that we've got secondary orbital overlap between carbon 3 and this carbonyl carbon, and carbon 2 and this carbonyl carbon. stabilizing the endo approach and leading to the product that we actually observe, which, if I draw it in this orientation, looks like this. We have our CH2-CH2 bridge. We have our new bond. And now this group is down. that the hydrogen is coming up. And numbering those carbons. It looks like that, where we have our new six-membered ring with our endothermal image in the endo position. Hopefully that's going to help a little bit as you try to unpack all the orbital interactions. And 
I'll see you next time.